Good evening and welcome to Kuala Tringanu and Malaysia for the Monsoon Cup. We have just concluded day three and we have concluded qualifying. It has been an incredible day out on the water. But before I break the excitement, before I tell you the results, before I tell you about the upsets, the highs and the lows, let's have a look at how things stood before we came into this event. Line to win, Match Race France. Bruni wins. Match Race Germany. Bjorn Hansen, the new king of the Korea Match Cup. And Ian Williams takes the second place and the win here in Portugal. Williams wins the Senna Match Cup sweep. Kursky takes the title. And that's the second World Tour event in a row. really close to Ian and we, we have a, a very big chance for the world, world title in the Monsoon Cup so we're just going to be fighting for that and hopefully win that event too. Be very competitive in Malaysia, we only six points behind is, is not a lot, I mean to be able to go there and, and have a chance to win the world championship is, is great for us. As it is we, we'll, we'll go to Malaysia leading, we'll obviously need to sail a lot better than we sailed here. But if we can pick ourselves up and, and sell well, then we still got a, obviously a very good chance of the World Championship. So we came into the Monsoon Cup. We knew that this is the event where a champion would be crowned. We came into the event with three potential world champions. And I can tell you, we now only have two. One of those three has today gone home. They didn't get through qualifying. So let's have a look at the results and find out who it was. So at the top of the leaderboard, it was the young Kiwi, Will Tiller, an outstanding performance here in his debut at the Monsoon Cup with eight wins and three losses. In second place, it was fellow Kiwi Phil Robertson, who also got eight and three. In third place, it was the Swede Bjorn Hansen after his great win in Korea with seven and four. In fourth place, the veteran here of the Monsoon Cup, Peter Gilmore of Australia with six wins and five losses. Ian Williams also qualifying of Great Britain with six wins and five losses. Francesco Bruni also made it through just by the skin of his teeth with six wins and five losses, as did Jesper Radic with six wins and five losses. The final person to qualify was Johnny Bernson with five and a half wins, having been docked half a point for an instant against Ian Williams and five losses. So it, that means Torvar Mursky of of Australia currently or was third place on the world match racing tour standings as we are at the moment didn't make it through in ninth place narrowly missing out against Bruni to make it five losses five wins and six losses Mathieu Richard of France also missing out with four and seven Damien Yell of France also with four and seven and Jeremy Ku of Malaysia not scoring one win here in Malaysia so it really has been an incredible day of highs and lows and it did go all the way down to the wire. At one point, we could have seen all of our top three not make it through to the next round. But the conditions have been fantastic. The sun has been shining. The wind has been blowing. And here are the best moments from today.
also an absolutely incredible day. And as I say, taking it right down to the wire, we went into the final match of today with both Torvar Mursky and Francesco Bruni on five wins. One of those guys was going to claim the last spot in the quarterfinals. And how many lead changes were there in that match, Francesco? I couldn't even keep up. It was one of the ba best match races I have ever seen. Yeah, it was one of the best I've ever done. <laughs> it's been you only say that because you won, right? Well, it's been a dr dramatic day for us. We had a lot of up and downs and uh, uh, we had a lot of matches uh, that we lost being ahead. And uh, one of those was the, the one with Ian. And uh, again, with Gilmour the same. And finally, uh, the luck went on our side and we won a match by half a metre on Torvar. It was unbelievable. And probably it was the most half important half a metre of your yeah. tour so far this year. For sure, for sure, 100%. But I mean, we are at the stage now where it totally matters. This is your life, your career, your job and... You know, it's super important, and uh, a world title, you know, doesn't come every day. Um, so we we are pushing hard. It's not easy. It's not an easy job. Uh, Ian is a great sailor, and tomorrow I think we're going to have some fantastic racing. Just tell me, how does it feel going into a match when you're racing against probably your closest rival, just point two of a point between you in the overall leaderboard, and knowing that you have to win it? What on earth goes through your mind? Well, the most uh, most of the time before the match, I was thinking, oh, how many occasions I had, oh, the, the other match, oh, that other match, you know, and uh, you are thinking of how many occasions you lost uh, before that match, and then uh, once the warning signal goes up, you think uh, about what you have to do and to do your job properly. Uh, it was an incredible uh, race, racing area today, left and right, only, I mean, only one boat length in between one corner and the other. And I think that, was, that made the race fantastic and great. And the race was always open. We knew that. But, uh, you know, we were two, two board lengths behind before the last jibe. And uh, winning by half a meter has been a fantastic emotion. I mean, I have to say, from where I was watching, I thought it was all over for you. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened? I think uh, we, the good thing is that we put some little bit of pressure on him on the first downwind and uh, we roll over him um, because uh, he jibed too late. So um, he, having done this mistake on the first downwind, uh, he, he went on the other corner and jibed a little bit too early and gave us the opportunity to take the starboard advantage. Um, he probably should have done two extra jibe and probably been still ahead at that stage but um, you know uh, it's it's very hard for everybody everybody makes mistakes uh, not only Torvar we all did me Ian uh, during the all round robin and during the whole season and uh, you know it's a little sometimes it's a little bit about luck as well okay Francesco thank you very much we're going to come back to you in a moment but let's talk to Ian Williams team GAC Pinder in uh, skin of your teeth again I mean it really was down to uh, of course it was you know you took it right the way to the wire you went into this afternoon session needing to win both of your matches in order to get through to the quarterfinals and you went out there and you did it and you sailed extremely well well you're right I, I, I winced a little bit at the again I'm not sure it's always the skin of our teeth but um, absolutely today I, I don't think I've ever um, felt so fortunate to to qualify for, for the quarterfinals of any regatta we had um, a very close race against um, well firstly against Torvar that we lost and uh, and that put us in the situation where we, we were must win two ways two races against Bruni and Richard so tough tough races and um, Francesco led us the whole way around and uh, we just squeaked past him it felt like the finish line just sort of scooped us up and pulled us in and, and, and pushed him away at the same time and uh, yeah I mean it was, it was incredible really. And what about Torvar? I mean it, you know this is a situation that you've been in before losing out on a world championship and what must he be feeling? It's, it's, I mean it's, he was absolutely mortified. Yeah uh, him and his, and his guys will be absolutely devastated. I know exactly how they feel. Uh, we were in, in a very similar situation two years ago going out um, but, it, you know, it hap every year the Monsoon Cup ditches a, a big name. Like, you know, Spittle, Ainsley, Minoprio, they've all gone out before the quarterfinals here and uh, us as well and, 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 and now Torvar. But, but um, 
you know, individually, uh, you know, and as a group, I'm, I'm sure they'll bounce back. They're, um, you know, they're, they're, they're great guys. As I said in the press conference, they, they, I, I've, it's been an honour to race against them on the tour this year and previously. They've always conducted themselves with with great sportsmanship and integrity, and been a, and been a fantastically competitive team at the same time. So, uh, yeah, sure, I feel sorry for them. And I mean, it's been a pretty emotional, exhausting day for both of you guys. You know, <laughs> how are you feeling in yourself? It's, you know, there's been some full-on sailing the last few days. And it's really only just beginning. Absolutely, it's um, big, you know, big highs and lows. Just you know, just to get through to the next round. But uh, well, Francesco's in a very similar situation. I th I'm, I'm, I'm fairly sure that whoever wins the quarterfinal between us will, will win the regatta, uh, and consequently will win the world championship. So um, you know, it's all about tomorrow morning. Okay, well that takes us nicely into the next topic. I want to talk to Francesco about, obviously. You ended up being put together to sail against uh, against each other in the quarterfinals purely because of the other picks in front of you guys. I mean, so we are going to have a world champion tomorrow, pretty much. Well, it's not mathematically sure because uh, Ian has those six points of uh, leadership uh, that uh, in a mathematical way could work for him pretty well. But obviously, uh, we are happy that we have a chance of uh, beating him and uh, go through and uh, let him uh, uh, fight for the fifth place. So um, we have the chance of uh, winning the title tomorrow. Um, won't be mathematically sure because we can always end up fourth and uh, he, he can still have a chance of winning the title, but at least he's on our hands. We, I, I would have hated to have uh, you know, someone else racing us and someone else racing Ian, and, uh, and, you know, and, and, and then it's about who has been uh, better with someone else, not, not, not against each other. So I think it's a great thing to, be, uh, to have this opportunity. He could have, we could have had that opportunity in the semi-finals, maybe, uh, if we both have been lucky to go through, but uh, I prefer to have, it, to have it straight away and take it right now. And Ian, had it been your pick, would you have chosen Francesco and, and got him out of the way quickly if you won? And, you know, wrapped it up there and then? Absolutely. Yeah. Really? Or, or would you gone, you know, for somebody that on paper is an easier option? How, how would you know? It, um, you, you, get, you go with what you feel at the time. It's a real gut instinct. Uh, choices haven't been too successful for us this year, so to be perfectly honest with you, I was just relieved not to have to choose. And, <laughs> and of course, a big day for you. If you do win the quarterfinals against Francesco tomorrow, that, that's it. The, ch the World Championship is yours. Yeah, it'd be, uh, obviously it would be fantastic for, for Team JC Pindar to, to, to bag a third world title. It, it, um, it's not unprecedented, but it, you know, it's a pretty top list of, uh, list of teams that have done that before. And uh, you know, it would obviously be great for all of us on the team to, 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 to join those people. Well, I'm fairly sure you're going to have some very tough competition from the Italians sitting next to me. Guys, thank you very much. An extraordinary day out on the water, and it's been a pleasure watching you guys both sail today. Good luck tomorrow. We've been talking about the quarterfinal draw, the boat pick. I was there earlier, and this is what happened. So I'm now here. We've just come straight off the water, having concluded the extremely exciting qualifying round. Emotions are running high, but it's time for the losers to say goodbye and go home, and for the quarterfinalists to come here to the boat draw and the boat pick live here in Kuala Tringano for the Monsoon Cup. We have just seen Will Tiller, the young Kiwi guy who came out top of qualifying, come forward and pick to sail against Johnny Bernson of Sweden. Next up it's Phil Robertson and he has chosen to take on the master of the Monsoon Cup, Peter Gilmore. It is all so exciting and it will all start here tomorrow for the quarterfinals. So, of course, as I said, it was William Tiller who came out of the top of qualifying, the young Kiwi that got to pick here first. And he chose to sell against Johnny Bernson of Sweden, of course. That left next up Phil Robertson, the fellow New Zealander, and he chose to race against Monsoon Cup and World Match Racing Tour veteran Peter Gilmore. Next up was Bjorn Hansen to pick. Now, he had a tough choice. Should he choose Raddick? Should he choose Williams? And should he choose Bruni? But no, he decided to let the two guys at the top of the table fight it out so he chose Danish sailor Jesper Radic and as we've just heard that left Williams to sail Bruni tomorrow so I know it's a not a mathematical certainty but the chances are tomorrow we may well see one of those two guests that just joined me Williams and Bruni win 
a win the quarterfinal round and head straight through to the semi-finals and take the world championship. It's going to be an incredible day. Today was an incredible day. Remember, there are plenty of ways to follow us and the new exciting one to follow all the very best of match racing is with our new e-zine. Match Racing 360. Issue 2 of Match Racing 360, the world's first e-zine dedicated to match racing, is now available for download at matchrace.com. Make sure you download it, get it on your iPad, get it on your computer because it is the very best of the match racing news from around the world. Now, I can guarantee that the action tomorrow is going to be as fabulous as it was today. I'll be here in the morning with the morning show. I'm hoping to have Peter Gilmore on the show because I want to talk to him about whether he thinks he can get on the podium now he's got through qualifying. If you can't join me then, Mark Chisnell, the rest of the team and I will be back between three and five. That's UTC plus eight, so local time here in Malaysia. Asia. And if not, join me this time tomorrow for the evening show where we will definitely have four semi finalists. We may even have two finalists. It's all happening here in Kuala Tringano for the Monsoon Cup, the eighth and final event on the 2011 World Match Racing Tour. Should we start with a hug? And we're going to leave you now with the Torvar Mesky interview that I, I did. And as we said, saying. off the water yeah, today, it's just he's a devastating. very um, you know, we just really felt like we were capable of going further in this regatta and, and the championship. So it's just really heartbreaking to to lose it expect exactly like that as well. And so close as well. I mean, you know, I, it, it was right down to the wire. Yeah, I mean. We just got that little extra puff. Previous ones had worked out on that side and uh, just didn't. So went from a two length lead and comfortable into the quarters to, to out and, uh, you know, just. just. <laughs> um, so, without seeming like the X Factor, you have had some great moments this year. Obviously, a win in Bermuda and a win in Samaritz. So, you know, you have had some great times. I know this is disappointing, but. You know, you're going to try and look back on this in a few days' time as a, a successful year. Yeah, we um, we just hit world number one on the ISAF rankings the other day, and we did win two events this year. But um, I think that makes it tougher for us <laughs> when we see this result here. But um, yeah, it's it's been a it's been an up and down year, and it's it's a, um, certainly we feel like we're capable and we're good sailors. It's just. Um, it's a, there's that little edge, that um, that little that little trick that just needs to go our way sometime soon. Okay, mate. Well, very bad luck today. Sorry it didn't go your way. I, I, you know, I don't know what else to say, but we hope to see you again on the World Match Racing Tour. Thank you.